Of all the members of the animal kingdom, none are more dangerous than mosquitoes. Mosquitoes rank as humanity's biggest killers, far larger than any other member of the animal kingdom. In principle, mosquitoes kill at least one million people annually. This is in addition to the number of infected people, which is estimated at hundreds of millions, with a full load of blood in their stomachs before takeoff. They begin flapping their wings, but it must be a secret operation. They cannot push too hard, or they will detect the cat and confront it with its long leg, allowing it to push very slowly and gently. Using only a quarter of her leg strength, by the time we sense the attack, she's long gone. Hence a question arises. What would happen if all mosquitoes disappeared? Would anyone be upset by that? Welcome. I am Mohammed Saleh. But before we start, if you are still new to the channel, do not forget to subscribe and activate the bell to receive our videos first. From the button below. The question. Why don't we eliminate and get rid of all mosquitoes? Then another question will appear. Can we even do something like this? Even though humans are truly destructive and have caused the extinction of many creatures, when we want to do this story on purpose, we can't do it. Perhaps the most famous deliberate attempt is the one based on which the Swiss scientist Paul Miller won the Nobel Prize when he discovered DDT. This man made the world think that he got rid of harmful insects, especially mosquitoes. But what happened then, and in less than 10 years, was that insects began to acquire immunity to pesticides. The rest of the creatures, including humans, began to pay the price through a new package. Plants that were sprayed with pesticides began transmitting diseases to animals and humans who ate them. Because in the end, the use of DDT was banned in most countries of the world. As for the Nobel Prize for the year 1948, it turns out that the insects were more deserving, not Paul Mueller. After the great failure of insecticides, man continued to fight mosquitoes and did not give up. But we wanted to control its numbers, not eliminate it. Control methods have varied, such as awareness campaigns and imposing fines on those who create a fertile environment for mosquitoes. In addition, people were encouraged to raise natural enemies of mosquitoes, such as fish, bats, and some fungi. Other methods have also emerged to prevent mosquitoes from landing their larvae in the water. These control methods have achieved good results in controlling their numbers. But in the end, these methods were not suitable for complete annihilation. Now, suppose we were able, somehow, to eliminate mosquitoes. Is this total annihilation even in our interests, or not? Entomologists themselves disagree about the answer to this question. Some say that the consequences of genocide, whatever they may be, would be no worse than the current situation. Mosquitoes, as we said, cause the death of one million people every year. Either through malaria, dengue fever, viruses, or other mosquito-borne diseases. What does it mean that more of this will happen? As for those who oppose the idea, they say, this is in principle, before we say what, as we said, some fish, including the mosquito fish, depend primarily on mosquitoes for their food. This means that the number of these creatures will also decrease significantly. Then the problems start to get worse. Because the animal that was eating the mosquitoes had another animal to eat. The animal that eats it will have a third animal to eat. The entire food chain that started with mosquitoes will be slaughtered. However, this has already been proven during the major mosquito control, efforts that took place in America and France. 
Some young birds that were feeding on mosquitoes were unable to spawn. It is also expected to be among these monuments. There will be an impact on the types of plants in whose ecological balance mosquitoes participate. Except for the small number of dangerous females who raid for blood. All other species, including males of dangerous species, they feed on the nectar of plant flowers. It also contributes to the pollination process, especially on aquatic plants where mosquitoes spread. As long as these plants will be affected, marine life in the same place will certainly be affected. Those who consider these plants their food. Finally, among the effects that the mosquito extermination process will include are scientific effects. But to understand this issue, we must first know how mosquitoes transmit infection. This infection occurs because the mosquito itself acquired the infection when it sucked the blood of a sick person. Then she goes to another healthy person, throws her needle into him, and transmits the disease to him. That's why scientists have focused their efforts on a completely new way to combat mosquitoes. That is, it strengthens the immunity of the mosquito itself. If the mosquito has immunity and is not infected with the disease, it will not transmit it. These experiments vary between genetic modifications, or injecting mosquitoes with bacteria, or other attempts. If all the mosquitoes disappeared, this research would not continue. Not to mention, other studies are trying to take advantage of mosquitoes' ability to anesthetize. When a mosquito bites you, and you don't feel like it's piercing you with a needle or anything, not even when you're bleeding, this story can still be useful in applications, including surgeries. So mosquitoes have benefits too. And that's it. We're done. Who got here? Everyone who got here. You are the best people. Give us a like before you leave so we can see how many people made it to the end. And do not forget, if you get a question that confuses you, write it to us in the comments below the video so we can respond to it. What we do now, we will take from your comments. Goodbye.